James Caprellian. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for the time, man. Yep. And thanks for being a what pros wear follower Absolutely. as well. You got the glove out. That thing yeah, we got looks the glove right sick, here. man. I've never even seen that web before. It's uh, it's actually a new web that Rawlings got going this year. I've always been a fan of the the two piece. Kind of makes me feel like an infielder out there a little bit. Um, and then I obviously got the uh, the green and gold colorway with the black on here. And um, this is a uh, pro preferred. Um, it's 12 and a quarter, which typically I've always gone 11 and three quarter on some of my older gloves up there, but I'm going up uh, half an inch this year. Um, hopefully, you know, hide the ball a little bit better with these hitters. And um, But yeah, this is the, uh, the colorway I'm going with. I got another one that's coming, same basically deal, um, except instead of the green here, it's it's all gold, so this is gonna shine a little bit. So um, it'll be cool. Well, do you know what the name of that web is? Because that web's unbelievable. Honestly, I, I don't. I don't know the name of it. It's. I do know it's their new two-piece though. Like I saw it right away, and I was like, this is definitely the one I'm trying to snag. Yeah, that's um, sick. I like that it's got a little swag on the top. Yeah, on it. yeah, it's cool. It's got this little, this little V with the leather here. I feel like the uh, the two-piece is the standard for pitchers. Do you yeah, know why? A, a lot of guys like like more covered up. I mean, obviously this thing's got to be tightened up a little bit, um, but I just like I just like the way the pocket feels. And for me, I'm trying to be athletic on the mound and make as many plays as I can. Um, and this is the web that really does it for me. So. You know what? That was such a great point that I, I actually I feel like I've been wanting to ask a pitcher. Do you feel like the Greg Maddox school of defense is like a dying breed? Because I just see guys Obviously, you're throwing yeah, as hard as you can. It, for sure. It's, max effort is kind of the – is that kind of like the standard now, or, or is defense kind of – No, I mean, defense is still – important. I mean, especially spring training, we're all doing PFPs every day and stuff. But for me, I take pride in defense. I know a lot of guys do. And, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier for us when we know we got Matt Olson or Matt Chapman on the corners, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of the time, we're going to go for the ball until we get called off. And, yeah. and you're going to get guys, called off most of the time. Most of the time, those guys are going to call off. <laughs> yeah. But there's those big plays where you kind of got to be ready. Um, and, you know, I think it'd be pretty cool to win a gold glove one day. Why not, you know? Uh, yeah. They still give those out to pitchers. So yeah. um, I take pride in just, you know, being able to cover the position and trying to be an athlete out there. So when you... After you get let go of the ball, you become a defender. Yeah. Is, it, is there sure. any philosophy there, like, um, or or is it like the drive line thing where it's just like throw it as hard as you can and like spin around? I mean, are is there some like balance to that? You know. I mean, you're kind of you. Ideally, mechanically, you want to finish in in an athletic position and and getting good extension over the, you know over the rubber and down the mound. Um, in the right direction. Me being a righty, I'm obviously going to pull off to my left a little bit towards first base. Um, so you just kind of have to, it's just kind of a preparation thing. You kind of just need to be ready. Um, obviously, the most important thing is being able to make the pitch. Um, you got to be able to make the pitch. Uh, if you don't do that, then there's no play there. So make the pitch, but always just be aware and be ready for any sort of play that's coming your way, really. What do you wear for cleats? So cleats, I rock. I'm just wearing the Harachis. I like the all white, um, the white toe. It's a good cleat. I always go spikes. You know, I'll wear these ones, the, the same thing, basically like just uh, non-spikes, basically on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to protect the feet a little bit. Right, right, um, but, but, but for game days. But anytime you... I'm coming off the mound, I'm wearing spikes. Um, I want it to be, you know, game-like and, and, uh, and feel that traction. So these are good cleat. I like what Nike did with them. Um, you know, the all white to me is, pretty clean look obviously we're the a's so we wear those a lot yeah. that's um, that's i mean it's one of the best uh, traditions it's like pinstripes for the yankees it's yeah like, exactly it's the same thing same dude like the, the 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 history of dudes who have come up you know for the white a's cleats, yeah white it's pretty cleats. sweet it's just one of those things um i got a couple other pairs that are on the way they're actually not here right now so i'm gonna have to show you those another time but okay cool um, yeah you can same always type send of deal them. yeah they're white you know sweet little green outline on them love it love it how about um, the J bands there? What, what yeah, do you do yeah. with that? I've been doing the uh, the J band since since oops, since college, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, Alan Jager does a good job. You know he made these bands, and um, it's something it's just kind of part of my routine. Um, you, you know. Do? For me, it's just about kind of getting the arm activated, um, feeling the right muscles. Um, you know, you go through a, kind of a series of, of exercises before as a warm up. You could do it post, post throwing or whatever. I like to do it as a warm up. Um, you know, just 
all sorts of different exercises that really just kind of you know make me feel ready and athletic as a pitcher after after your injury has anything changed in your in the, the way you uh get ready for a game or the way you throw between yeah starts i think well i mean after my injury i actually got away from doing the j bands um you know you do so much shoulder exercises and so much different stuff um and for me it was one of the things that i got away from and then coming back into it now now that i'm healthy again trying to get the mechanics cleaned up and get back to myself it's something I pulled back out of the bag again. I was like, this is something that I kind of want to have implemented into my routine again. And uh, I feel like it's actually helping me kind of get back to myself again, which is nice. So it's one of those things that I've kind of probably going to stick with for a while now. Yeah, yeah. I think you're a, a really a great uh, person to have on our channel because you've been through uh, I've been a through really, the ringer a little bit. Really tough. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough. It's been really hard. Process. So, what would you say if if you there i actually i forgot the book but um one of the fan questions i got was what do you know now that you wish you knew back maybe a couple years ago so let's let's put that question into this the surgery thing like what what do you wish what would you tell someone who was about to go into that like to prepare for it or you know maybe a kid who's going to go through that surgery i think it's just um you know, there wasn't something that I necessarily learned from going through all of it. I think it's just kind of a battle. It's it's a it's a grind, and there's a lot of hours and uh, you know time alone. I think the hardest part, honestly, is everything that's going on in the mind. Um, for me, I got Tommy John surgery, so I got a nice little <laughs> nice little zipper on there, and then I, you know, coming back from that, I uh, I was having some shoulder issues and um, had to kind of have another setback Isn't that and the way it goes man that's how it happens um i'm obviously good now which is which is exciting so um but for me i think the, the hardest part is just trying to stay positive with the whole thing i mean it's really it's really a grind and you you're not alone going through that you know you got to rely on your friends family and the people around you your teammates your coaches um everyone's pulling for you to to, to get healthy and that's something i realized the whole way is even to this day now you know knowing how many people i have in my corner um, how many people are you know cheering on and have seen the process of me going through this injury over the past couple of years and now to be back where I'm at um, it's exciting so it makes me you know not only want to do it for myself but for the people who've supported me the whole time um, so you know just just realizing you're not really you're not really as alone as you may you know feel going through something like that which is I'm sure a lot of I'm sure a lot of guys who've you know gone under the needle would say the same thing. Yeah, did you and when I? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, know. he was he was rehabbing his shoulder when I was doing a bunch of my stuff, and um, it's kind of one of those things where guys just kind of you got to bounce off positive energy and positive vibes, and you know keep the skies blue and just stay stay up there. One of one fan question I know for sure uh, that I can remember. It was, I think it was from E. Kizzle. Okay. <laughs> it was best fast food order. Best fast food order. Man, I'm from California, so I'm going to go with In-N-Out. Of course. Um, I'm a Southern California guy, so I got to go In-N-Out. I might be guilty for having it earlier this week as a little <laughs> treat. But I, I usually go with the three by three at In-N-Out, animal yeah. style. Um, yeah. Got to go fries and a lemonade for me. That's personally me. Solid. Try and eat as healthy as I can, but in and out, it's got to be in the, it's got to be in there every now and then. In and out is like part of a balance. Yeah, diet, I, feel like I think you got to go like 80-20, you know, 80% healthy, 20%, yeah. keep it loose, keep the mind sane a little bit. Last question I have, and it's, um, it's from a friend who is a teacher, and uh, he likes to tell his kids from some successful people, what are the three most important things um, that you would attribute your success to? Just anything at all. What what are those three things that you would say are, are most important to your success? Oh man, um, I think for me, it's the first thing would be. I mean, in no specific order, but you gotta want it. You gotta you gotta enjoy the process of getting better. Um, I'm one of those guys who I don't really get satisfied, um, and it's you know. Some would say I'm a perfectionist. I don't see it that way, but it's just, you know, I know that hopefully I'm going to make my major league debut, do that, and then it's going to be like, you know, I want to be an ace. And then, you know, I want to be an all-star, and then I want to do all these things. I want to win a World Series. Um, there's always, I've always had goals. Um, so I think that's kind of my main point right there is having goals and stuff that you always want to attribute, um, short-term and long-term. And, you know, I write them down. That's something I learned at a young age from my dad. 
um, you know, being able to just see them and, 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 and put it on the paper and, you know, kind of feel it be closer in grasp uh, at some point. Um, that's one of the big ones for me, goals. Anything, anything else? I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be three things. If you don't I, don't, I mean, I just, I honestly think like, it just comes down to work, man. Like you just got to want it. Um, there's been times where I've been, you know, questioning stuff. When you go through injury, you question, you know, how, how bad you really want it. And um, I wouldn't necessarily say there's three things. I think just that's it for me, man. It's just like, how bad do you really want to be the best? How bad do you want to be great at what you're doing? You know, I want to be, I may not be the best pitcher in baseball, but I want to be the best pitcher in baseball, you know, whatever it is. So I think, you know, you got to continue to just push and, you know, the guys who stay in this game the longest are the ones who are continuously getting better and evolving year to year. Um, those are the guys who have the 10, 15, 20 year careers, you know, like a CC Sabathia, for example, through 97, came back, you know, after knee surgeries, all these things, 19 year career, throwing, you know, low 90s now, but are, you know, when he was finishing his career and, but he's a stud still, you know, those are the guys who, they just continue to evolve and get better. Um, so I think just wanting it and just wanting to wanting to be great, man.